Hi everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are doing another board game review for you guys. Today we're talking about Dominion uh, by Donald X, published by Rio Grande Games. Uh, but before we go into that, let's go into our Pounds and Inches segment where we talk about our journey towards our better health lives. All right, so some, as some of you guys know, uh, we're doing, or I'm doing, Whole30 again, and Ryan said he's sick and tired of me talking about it, so I'll make it really, really short. Oh, sure. <laughs> it's already too long. <laughs> so one of the things that I did is I actually planned out all of our suppers um, for the entire, in the, the entire program, and it has helped a lot. I don't have to think about it. I just look it up, buy the stuff, make the stuff, and um, not having to think about what we're doing for dinner every single night for a month just has really, I don't know, it's made it a lot easier. I am celebrating uh, the fact that I had 18,000 steps today, which would, uh, probably not a lot for some of you, but for me and my terrible knees and ankle and everything, I would have been un unheard of. I mean, it would have been impossible a year ago. Um, the fact that I've lost this weight um, has made it so that I kept on going and I, I'm still walking now. I mean, sure, it hurts a little bit, but I'm very happy with the fact that I'm capable of moving that much now uh, and still still standing. We are all happy you're moving. Now let's get on to the game. Okay, so in Dominion, we are landowners trying to get more land. Um, the theme really is just pasted on here, but it is a medieval setting, so that helps with the artworks on the individual cards. Um, this is a deck building game. It's kind of the game that mainstreamed deck building, but pff, you don't want to hear me talk about it. You want to see it. So let's head over to see Ryan um, show you how it works. Let's take a look. So Dominion is a game that is called a deck builder. So basically what that means is you're going to start with a very weak starting hand of some coppers, the smallest money denomination, and some estates, the smallest victory point denominations, and that's it. Uh, you're basically going to be adding cards to your deck over time, you're kind of shuffling them in. As you buy better and better cards, your deck gets better and better, and you might be able to cull some of your bad cards out of the deck, some of those starting cards and then work your way into these bigger, stronger cards that you can buy bigger, stronger cards so you can buy bigger, stronger points. And that's kind of ultimately how you win. Whoever has the most points wins. So how you start off is you're going to shuffle up your deck. You're going to drive, draw five cards and whatever is in that hand, you might have, let's say $3. You can buy any card you want that has $3. For instance, this village card has $3 in that bottom left hand corner. So that is available for purchase. You would discard that along with all the money that you spent and all the cards that you didn't use that hand and then draw up the next five cards hand. When you need to draw a card and you don't have any cards to draw, you basically take your discard pile, shuffle it, and then draw, it makes a new draw pile from which you can draw up to whatever you need. There are several different types of cards. For instance, there are the treasure cards, of which the coppers that you started with are among those. You also have the victory point cards which you started with some of those as well. And then you have action points as well down here. And there might be some in certain sets, treasure cards, victory point cards, kind of like this gardens card here, or reaction cards as well that can kind of mess with people. And then attack cards, which are much more direct at attacking people. On your turn, all you can do is make one purchase and you can play one action. However, there are cards that help you modify that. For instance, a card like the market gives you a whole bunch of stuff, but in addition to that, an extra action and an extra buy. So when this, if you played this card, you'd be able to make two purchases that turn, as well as have extra actions in addition to itself. There are many attack cards in the game. This one here, Thief, uh, lets you kind of mess with people's treasure cards. However, there are also kind of defense cards or reaction cards, which might let you kind of get out of that. In this case, the moat does that for you. So basically, you're going to just take turns drawing cards, buying cards, bigger and stronger cards, and eventually you want to work up to these provinces. These are worth six victory points. They cost you eight dollars, so they are very expensive. However, this is what triggers the end game condition. The game ends when either this entire stack of provinces has been bought, or any three piles of basically anything else. At the end of the game, you count up your victory point cards, and you subtract any curse cards that you might have acquired from cards like the witch that might give you some curse cards, and whoever has the most points wins. 
real quick before we get more in depth to the game um those individual cards that were part out are called kingdom cards and in the base game there's 25 different ones so at the start of every game you choose 10 out of those 25 to play yeah there are a ton of combinations uh there's just lots of possibilities even within that base game uh there are some pre-set up kind of predetermined ones that the game suggests in the rule book uh, that you can choose these 10 and it introduces new concepts and different strategies. Uh, but as well, there's randomizer cards that come in the game that you can kind of shuffle those up, shuffle out 10, and that tells you what 10 you'll be playing with that game. Uh, we actually have an app. There's a bunch of different apps out there, but it lets you kind of set up the parameters that you want to set up. You click on which expansions that you'll be using. You can even modify whether you want like an attack heavy game. Uh, whether you want there to be reaction cards in the game, uh, and then you hit the button, it randomizes it for you, spits out 10 random cards that fit the parameters that you chose for it. Uh, so there's just a ton of different uh, expandability and ton of different options for you. So speaking about a ton of options, even within the 10 cards, there's a ton of options. You can have somebody who's playing very aggressive. You could have somebody who's playing almost a solitaire game. You can have somebody else who's playing like a money game, all within the same 10 cards and yet all of them would be viable strategies to win. That's really neat about how you can really customize not just the cards but your specific gaming style. My favorite style is just getting actions that give you more actions that give you more actions just kind of steamrolling getting this big huge chain of events that allows you to have a ton of money you can just go nuts and buy a whole bunch of stuff. My favorite style is little texts. When there's more than four sentences, I am out. <laughs> and I've lost many a game that way. <laughs> uh, but it's you've also won some games. That way. <laughs> uh, this can be a quick game, uh, depending on what cards are out there, what kingdom cards are selected that game. It can be a very quick game. I'd say most games land between a half an hour and 45 minutes for us. Um, but every once in a while you get that set up where it's you know closer to an hour or more. Yeah, this is also one of the games that people always want to play. There have even been times where we're having a game night and deciding what to play next and somebody just grabs it and sets it up. This is a game that people are always willing to play. I think this game really shines at two player and at three player. You know, it also shines at four player. I think this game just plays really well regardless of the player count you have. Yeah, uh, and there are a lot of expansions you can add to this game. Uh, each one kind of adds its own theme as well as mechanical flavor. I'll highlight a couple of my favorites. Uh, Prosperity is a game uh, that's added in that just adds, kind of ramps everything up. Everything's more expensive, but the rewards and the benefits are just much stronger as well. Uh, Seaside, the expansion, adds in some cool duration card, cards, things that last kind of from round to round as opposed to just being out there for the one time. Uh, there's coins that get added in and victory point tokens, um, so just lots of options. Uh, I also like Alchemy is one of the ones that I think is, is a lot of fun. Uh, it adds in these potions, which is a way of... We should add it to the trade pile. It's a second uh, currency, so the cards might cost $3 plus a potion, as opposed to just costing a certain amount of money. And some of those cards are, are wildly strong, as well as can really mess the game up, and I love it. There is something I feel like I should warn you guys about this game. Be very wary to play it with somebody who is heavy AP prone. It might not be as enjoyable as you're hoping it will be. There are a lot of decisions in this game, and sometimes people can get overwhelmed with the amount of options that are presented before you. And if you have um, a hard time, or if somebody in your gaming group has a hard time just making a decision and going with it, um, I imagine this would be a very long game for you. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that uh, the when in a deck builder, you want all the cards to have the same back to them, so that way you kind of are drawing blindly and know you don't know what you're drawing. However, some of the newer expansions, as opposed as opposed to the base game and the older expansions, they have like a different color and different feel and different thickness to them. So you can kind of tell. A different thinness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are definitely thinner. And you can kind of, if you look at the top part of your deck, you can know which set it's coming from, which kind of changes your decisions that you might be making. Yeah. Um, Ryan mentioned earlier that one of his favorite parts about this game was the potential for combos. The potential for combos can happen with everybody, and if everybody has 
all these combos and if you like to play to watch everybody complete all their combos it can just sometimes be a while before it gets back to you that doesn't happen a lot um and especially i know not a lot of people play like this but when we play we kind of just like we're watching to make sure people don't cheat. We kind of just trust everybody. We trust everyone. We trust to everybody just, just to just do their own thing. <laughs> so, but that can happen. That is a possibility. This is not a travel friendly game. If you own maybe just the base game, perhaps it's, you know, you can just travel with that one box. But as soon as you start adding in two, three, four more boxes, uh, this is a game that never didn't leave our house for, for years before I finally kind of got a new, uh, storage solution that was a little more compact there's just so many cards and we have so many different expansions we have all but i think two expansions yeah. and it's just boxes and boxes uh, check the photos at the end of the episode uh you can see all the boxes that we have that we would have to travel with if we hadn't have thought of a different storage solution uh, and i've seen broken token has a really cool suitcase uh, i've seen people make a, a briefcase <laughs> and do a storage solution so um, if you're planning on getting more than one expansion i would say uh, it's it'd be worth investing in a storage solution. I think this game is a boomerang. And what I mean by that is you'll play it and then you'll toss it. All these new games will come, you'll forget about it, but it makes its way back into your life. And it just keeps on doing that over and over and over and over again. You will not be able to get rid of this game because you want it, you want it. I just love when you invent new terms and hope that they become a thing. <laughs> this is a tween game. This is a boomerang game. This is a LaCroix game. A tween game is a thing, and you all know it is. She invented it, and I'm not recognizing it. <laughs> uh, I'm, I feel comfortable saying uh, this is one of my favorite games of all time. I've never done my official formal ranking, so I couldn't say it's number two or number five or number whatever. But uh, this is, again and again, a, the game I come back to, and I just think, what's... <laughs> It's uh, the game that uh, gives me the best engine building out of basically every game that we have. Uh, I just love engine building. It's one of my favorite mechanics. This does it in spades. Uh, I love the custom customability of it. That's the customability. Is that the word? Customizability. It's some one of those is a word. I promise. Uh, if not, I'll make that my word. Sure. And it has that uh, strategery. I didn't make up a word, though. <laughs> Boomerang is a word. It's got strategery and customized body <laughs> <laughs> Uh No, I just love this game. Uh, it's one that we, we play. It's not leaving our, our collection ever. Yeah, because it keeps coming back to us. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this is a didgeridoo game. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the possibilities in this game are basically endless. <laughs> you just can't, you wouldn't be able to discover all that this game has. And I really like that every time we play it, we've played a new game. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's our thoughts on Dominion. I know we went to kind of the way back machine for that one. Uh, so uh, don't worry, there's new <laughs> new games coming. We're just kind of playing through and getting our, our, our thoughts together on all the new Gen Con releases and other new games. The truth is, we just wanted to play a game that was older that we liked, so we decided to review it too. Well, there you go. Uh, so if you want to see all those new reviews that are coming out, uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we also have our blog on BoardGameGeek.com. It's called Pounds and Inches, where we talk a little bit more about our health journey. We're also on Facebook, Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. We're on Twitter, at Ryan and Bethany one and we are on Instagram, at BNFigs, uh, where Bethany's always posting cool photos of board games. So in all those places, be sure to like, you can comment, and subscribe, because we love hearing from you guys. All right, well, this is Ryan, and I'm Bethany, encouraging you to play games, live healthy, and create moments. Bye, guys. Bye.